All right, now check this out. When I work with riders who complain about knee pain or they want to generate more power in the saddle, but every time they do, this quad gets all ooh, pumped up and angry. We got to teach how to differentiate between hinging at the hip to generate power from the glute and hinging at the knee and loading the knee joint and generating power there. So what I like to have riders do, and I program is called split squats times two. The two variations are with an elevated foot back here, Boom, that's the setup. On this leg, the first variation is you want to lean forward by hinging at the hip, almost like you're sitting your butt back onto one of those disgusting race day porter potties. And oh, I'm not going there, I'm going to stand back up. That's a hip hinge. This teaches how to hinge at the hip, get the glute to do a lot of the work. So the second part of split squats times two is actually trying to get the knee as far in front of the toe as possible, chest up. So you're loading the knee and the quad all the way forward, trying to drive it straight over the big toe, knee over toe as far as possible. You're allowed to go forward enough until your heel just comes off the ground, you know, no more than like a pinky finger underneath there. That's ooh, as far as you're going to go. And so when you do the first 10 reps of hinging at the hip, getting the glute to fire, and then the next 10 immediately is at the knee, this glute is already on and burning, you feel it, and then you're loading the knee joint and feeling that quad firing amid the context of this glute going. So when we want to add some axio 360 spice and change it up and add some perturbations to make it a little bit harder, you've already learned to hip hinge for 10. You've already learned to then immediately load the knee for 10. Well, then you add the Axio 360 in front of you. Now, remember that ball that's underneath here? You can move it back and forth and then get it woo going full circles the whole time. This is creating a very shaky, hard to control thing. Now, this single leg that I'm on, the burden and demand goes through the roof. Not only does your brain and nervous system have to perceive the challenge of balance here and then react accordingly, you have the challenge of hinging at the hip and differentiating that from loading at the knee. So if we add the axial right here and I got the ball spinning, if I'm loading that glue and driving back up, it is very woo, challenging to do that because I'm having this challenge of not falling left and right. My whole leg, it's not like I'm pushing into solid ground. It's like I'm on a very unstable surface, but I'm getting the core and shoulders providing that. So for cycling, you can hang on to the bars. You can lock in the shoulders and the core to stabilize down here. If you're riding across gravel, if you're on rough roads, if you're riding a mountain bike uphill, downhill, you need this capacity. So part two, you still get the axial going. Let me get it going. And then it's load the knee forward. And every time you load the knee forward, it gets a little wobblier and you got to control that all the way back up with the Axio 360. So check that out. Get this whole leg fired up and burning. So no matter what road, trail, or part of the world you're in, when you go to push power to the pedals, your brain and nervous system can connect so you can go bam, so you can rip it and rip it and ride your best.